If you've ever started drinking something from a plastic bottle, close the bottle and put it in the fridge for later, you probably noticed something weird about the bottle when you got back. It might be caved in or deformed, and you might notice that when you try to squish it, it has some weird behavior. What causes this? Well, when you closed it last, you trapped some liquid and some air in the bottle. After putting it in the fridge, both the air and the liquid cooled down. When an ideal gas cools down, the pressure decreases. This means that the pressure outside the bottle was more than the pressure inside the bottle, and the outside air crushed the bottle. If you leave it outside on the counter and let the bottle warm back up, it will expand and uncrush itself. That's actually why they ask you to punch holes in frozen food before you heat it up. If there were no holes for the expanding gas to escape through, your food would explode in the microwave. That's the power of an ideal gas. But what is an ideal gas? I've said that word twice now. An ideal gas is a model of any gas that assumes that the speed of the gas particles and the spacing between them is such that the molecules aren't affected by each other unless they collide. If this is the case, then the ideal gas law holds, which is PV equals nRT. P is the pressure that the gas is at, V is the volume of the container that the gas has available to it, N is the number of moles of gas in that container, R is a constant that people put in to make sure that all the units match up, and T is the temperature of the gas. Well, how does this relate to your drink? Well, the part of the bottle with no drink in it may look empty, but it's actually filled up by gas. The gas pressurizes the inside of the bottle and pushes out against all the gas in the room, which is trying to push in on the bottle. If this bottle was truly empty and if there was no gas, there would be nothing to push back against the gas in the room and the bottle would start to crush in. You actually run into this all the time. If you try to drink out of a plastic bottle without opening your mouth to let any air in, what happens? Well, the bottle shrinks. When you drink the water, mass is leaving the bottle, but nothing, not even gas, is going back in. This creates a vacuum inside the bottle or a region of lower pressure, which means that the pressure outside of the bottle is higher. This causes the bottle to crush in until the volume of the water bottle is small enough so that for the number of air molecules left inside the bottle at that temperature, the pressure inside is the same as the pressure outside. At that point, the bottle stops crushing until you drink more. Another example of gas behavior that we are familiar with is the fizzing in a soda can. Inside the soda can, there's dissolved carbon dioxide, or CO2. Just like sugar can dissolve in your coffee, gases can be dissolved in liquids. The gas will stay in solution at different pressures and temperatures. At the soda factory, the CO2 is dissolved in the bottle at a very high pressure and a very low temperature, with extra CO2 added to the top of the bottle to keep the pressure just right so that the dissolved CO2 stays in solution in the drink. When you open your can, the pressure inside the can equalizes to atmospheric pressure, which makes the CO2 inside the drink bubble out of solution. That's where you get the bubbles from that causes that fizz. If you were to leave it open for a while, eventually all the CO2 boils off, which is why your drink ends up flat. Pressure, temperature, and phase change are all related. Here's a really cool example. I put this IPA inside this bottle. You can kind of see it's evaporated a little bit because it's like a cloud. And so if you twist it up, um, we have a, the same temperature but higher pressure. And when we let it go, the pressure, like the volume gets bigger so fast that the temperature just drops and you get a cloud. Can you see it? I'm going to try it again. Different pressures can also change the temperature at which a phase change occurs. For example, we're all pretty familiar with the idea that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. But this isn't always true. At higher altitudes, water can boil at a slightly lower temperature because the air pressure is lower than it is at sea level. Pressure cookers are a device that allow you to cook food at a higher temperature. They increase the pressure inside the pressure cooker, meaning that the water has a higher boiling point and your food can cook at a higher temperature before all the water in your sauce boils off. All in all, the ideal gas approximation is a super useful model and it can be used to analyze things all across the site, from the engine in your car, all the way down to the drink sitting in your fridge.